everyone and welcome back to Behind the Kabuki. Today I am bringing you something completely different. We're not talking about makeup, we're talking about something that I get asked about all the time and that is when you go to Bali, where do you stay and what do you take and who do you go with and who do you travel with and uh, what do you eat and what do you do with the kids? So of course today I am talking about my Bali tips and tricks, if that's what you would call them. And so here it is. Uh, now I can just refer them to this video. <laughs> um, so my first tip when traveling to Bali is to always take something that uh, will hydrate you or hydrate your children in case you were to get sick. I find that even if I don't get sick, it's always great to take these things before you get on the plane so that you get on the plane and you're well hydrated instead of sculling like 30 bottles of water before you get on, you know, because that way you're not running up and back to the toilet on the plane, which is always super annoying, especially if you've got a child sleeping on your lap. I would say when you get to Melbourne Airport, I'm not sure if they have this anywhere else um, in, in any other states, but in Melbourne Airport, they have this little stand that sell these um, little bottles and they're called Above, one above, above, yeah, one above the flat drink and you drink this during your flight. It helps you stay hydrated, it um, stops you from getting tired and lethargic on the flight, it stops you from getting a uh, jet lag, it's amazing. I thought at first it was just one of those like little scams to try and sell me stuff before I get on the plane, but it actually is really, really, really good. If you have kids and they don't wanna drink that, you can always bring your little Gastrolyte icy poles and they work a treat as well and most of the time most kids love these an excuse to drink and have an icy pole and I find these are great even on the flight like give them these on the flight give them one every day just to keep them hydrated and um, fixing the hair here <laughs> full of um, full of hydration my second tip on traveling to Bali is to try to avoid um, water that has fruit like lemons or strawberries or mint in them. Most of the hotels you stay in these days, most, um, use bottled water and they make their ice out of the bottled water. So you don't have to worry about the ice, you don't have to worry about the water. Most of the time, I honestly about 90% of the time, if you're staying at a really good reputable hotel, they will be using bottled water for the water and the ice. However, where they go wrong is they think it's all really nice and special and lovely to go and put, you know, fresh strawberries or lemon or mint in that water, you know, at the at the breakfast um, bar. And then those, the mint, the, the strawberries, as nice as they are, because, you know, they're from their barley farm or wherever they get them from have pesticides in them that our bodies are not used to. The mint, same thing, even though it's been washed under underwater, there are so many tiny little like bugs and um, pesticides that, that we can't see with our, without the naked eye that could get into your intestinal tract and still make you feel sick. So my third point when traveling to Bali is try to avoid eating super, super cheap. I mean, most of the places, if you've been referred to a place by a friend, should be okay. But sometimes it's just a matter of forking out an extra couple of dollars to get a really, really good meal. I find that the only time I've ever been sick is when I went into a, a random place that I hadn't been referred to. I wasn't sure about it, but it looked reasonably okay. And I found myself not feeling too good afterwards. Places that um, are well known on the Bali Bible, which is a great little Instagram. Um, you can follow them on Instagram. You search under the Bali Bible. They've always got great little places that they refer uh, Aussies and tourists to go to and to eat eat at. And they've most of those places like Potato Head and Kudeta and um, La Luciola, Sister Fields. Um, Revolver. There's so many amazing cafes in Bali that are so 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 cheap. Um, compared to what you would pay here for the quality of food that you're getting. So try not to go too cheap, especially if you have chi uh, especially if you have chids, especially if you have kids, just because you know you want them to be eating you know good food and, and not to and to avoid getting sick. When traveling with kids, pack light. 
I mean, I would say even when traveling without kids, pack light. You really don't need a whole bunch of clothes and shoes and um, stuff for the kids. I mean, you know, you get there and you soon realize that everybody lives in t-shirts and thongs and, you know, you really don't need a great deal of stuff to bring along with you. You get there and you see that there's so many great you know, dresses for the kids and t-shirts for the boys and you dress for yourself for, for really cheap prices. If you want to party, stay in Cuda. If you want to relax with it as a couple, stay in Legian. If you want to go with your family to Bali, stay in Seminyak. You'll always find cheaper products in Cuda because it's a little bit more of a hustle and bustle place to be. It goes cheaper as you go down. So Cuda, quite cheap. Uh, Legian, reasonably cheap, and then Semiak, always more expensive because that's where all the boutiques are. So enjoy your trip to Bali, have fun, be safe, and just don't stress about anything. It's a great place to holiday, and if you have any questions about Bali, feel free to contact me. But that's pretty much all for today's episode of Behind the Kabuki, and I hope to see you soon.